in this lecture we will continue uh, discussing uh, dynamic scheduling but uh, now we'll uh, bring in the reality of uh, speculation in the form of uh, branch predictors uh, uh, handling exceptions and uh, the notion of in-order commit so in the last lecture we discussed about uh, Tomasulo uh, organization where we were providing out of order completion we know that out of order completion will uh, result into issues uh, simple example once we get a exception wh what do you do right so we need a notion of precise exception so that all the instructions before the exception are actually done and they are visible to the programmer and all the instructions that follow the exception uh, are not started yet or this will not affect the register state right so to maintain uh, uh, this this particular semantics uh, we need uh, additional uh, structure that can make sure that we we uh, take care of all the speculative uh, instructions uh, and then and make sure that they don't affect uh, the non speculative instructions uh, in the processor pipeline and in the process we'll uh, make sure that the instructions are also committing in order okay so the new structure is known as uh, reorder buffer or in short rob uh, the idea is uh, pretty uh, similar so in the issue stage we kind of get the instruction from the instruction queue and we issue the instruction if there is free reservation station and uh, there is an entry in the ROB which is free. So this is free and this is also free. Okay. Uh, what exactly this reorder buffer stores? It stores the program counter, which is nothing but the instruction. It has a valid or invalid bit. It can help you finding out whether uh, this is part of uh, speculative instruction or it's not. Uh, various uh, implementations uh, can be possible but uh, for, for the sake of simplicity let's assume uh, whether this particular entry is valid or not and uh, any exceptions uh, that, that are part of a particular instruction or not and finally the result or uh, like what exactly the value uh, is if it is uh, from from uh, memory right so if you look at the reorder buffer is kind of uh, uh, doing similar things as the reservation station but on top of that we are, we are handling some of the speculative uh, operations so and we need, we need to make sure that uh, the rob is actually not a bottleneck so uh, we should uh, we should be able to access rob uh, with with uh, minimum uh, delay so uh, that's why it's showing here when you issue an instruction it should go to rov and it should go to the resident station okay so we discuss the notion of issue execute and write uh, are the three stages with the uh, basic tomasulo but now with the reorder buffer what we have is the notion of commit we, we discussed about this term a month before but uh, let's understand now again in the context of dynamic scheduling so when a particular instruction reaches the head of the rov uh, that means it's actually ready to uh, get committed so that time it uh, update the registers uh, update the result into the registers and uh, all the speculation uh, all the instructions which are actually uh, uh, there on the speculative path they become uh, in the correct path or in the non-speculative path once they reach the head of the rob okay if you have uh, predicted a branch which is actually wrong so the moment you reach the head of the rob you actually flushes all the instructions which are before the head of the rob because everything was wrong that's actually wrong path uh, uh, instructions okay similarly if it is a store uh, from the memory perspective uh, you actually write into the store queue when the instruction reach 
uh, reaches the head of the ROV. Okay. So the moment instruction reaches the head of the ROV, you do all the uh, uh, semantics that, that you are supposed to do and then not before. Why it is? Because it also maintains the program order between the loads and stores. Okay. So now this is the new structure, uh, the ROB. Okay. And now uh, what we'll do is whenever we issue uh, something uh, uh, from the issue queue, we'll actually start putting one one entry here in the temporal order. So we will call this as the head of the ROB. Okay. So let's start with, uh, let's say a few instructions, uh, which are uh, doing, doing some memory operation and then some arithmetic operation. And it says whether it's done, no, it's, at, that means it's actually waiting uh, from, from the memory for uh, this particular load. And for uh, this particular addition, it's actually uh, waiting from uh, one of the functional unit, right? If you look at the reservation station now, it directly tags the ROB entry. Okay, instead of saying memory uh, or waiting for memory, right? It directly tags the ROB entry. So that makes it even more simpler and uh, the implementation complex, it is um, uh, even simpler, right? So this continues. Uh, we keep on getting all these instructions and then the ROB keeps track of it unless they are done. So let's say, for example, in next cycle, if this is done, so what will happen is this particular uh, instruction will be written as done but the key point is it don't get committed unless it reaches here and that can only happen once this uh, particular memory is done memory instruction is done the load operation is done right so this is the way uh, it provides the in order commit so no matter whether you are done uh, uh, before you you have to follow uh, this uh, uh, order okay this is the temporal order right so if, if you uh, correlate with the notion of uh, page fault uh, handling and then if something is going wrong in the pipeline, this is the place where you actually uh, handle uh, all, all the micro architectural uh, operations, right? So for example, if you're getting a page fault, uh, you actually uh, resolve it once you reach the head of the ROP. And then, then check whether yeah if everything is uh, good or bad, right? Whether it's actually in the right path or the wrong path, correct path or the wrong path. So the same happens to the store, same happens to the next exception, same happens to a wrong uh, prediction that you have made in the branch. So in that case, you have to squash the entire ROB and start getting fresh instruction from the issue queue. Okay. Remember the common data bus is still there. Uh, and then it's kind of uh, getting used by everyone, including uh, ROB. Okay. Uh, another uh, subtle point uh, that we, sh we should keep in mind is we, we have talked about notion of uh, data hazards, but but and then and, and uh, what can happen in out of order scheduling. But think about out of order loads and stores. Okay. So th there is no harm in out of order load and stores unless uh, they kind of affect the program semantics, right? So for example, if you look at these two instructions, right? The load is uh, followed by a store. And if you look at a high level view, it seems that there is no hazard here, right? But what if the content of R2 and when it's added with uh, uh, the offset is same as the content of R3. That means in this case, they are actually referring to the same memory address, right? Which means this load should not start unless the store is done, right? Once the store is done, then only we should start. Otherwise this load will get a store still value. So if you look at the ROB, the ROB will actually uh, tell you whether this particular thing is uh, done or not, right? And it will be only done when this particular instruction reaches the head of the ROB, right? So it will be updated into uh, the store queue and eventually it will go to the L1 CAS and maybe if it is uh, dirty and it will be replaced as a write back CAS, it will go to L2, L3 and eventually DRAM. Okay, so the key here is, you know, uh, we can go ahead and start the load early, 
as long as this condition is uh, uh, not true right if, if both of them uh, are pointing to the same address uh, then uh, as you know as you already know that this is an issue uh, so so far we have looked at a simple process that actually uh, fetches one instruction at a time it's not a super scalar process if we make it super scalar then we will fetch multiple instructions we will issue multiple instructions all the microarchitectural structures that we have discussed in the previous lecture and this lecture should be updated concurrently remember let's say i am talking about a fetch it uh, fetch width or issue width of four that means four instruction can go into the resolution station and in the rob concurrently in the same cycle right so either you can apply the old trick that uh, you can perform updates in the rising edge in the falling edge or all the structures that we discussed you should go for a pipeline implementation of it so uh, eventually your uh, uh, latency will be amortized and your throughput won't be affected your ilp will be still more or less the same okay i won't go into the details of that because that will be uh, too much for this course uh, maybe an advanced course on the computer architecture we'll talk about that so that uh, let's look at whatever we have studied so far for the, this out of order processor and memory hierarchy and whatever we covered in the last uh, three months or so is this outdated or this is actually uh, there in a commercial machine that you are using today either it is a phone or whether it's a uh, data center so let's look at something from the intel core microarchitecture Let, let's look at what are the terms that we are aware of now right so let's start from the fetch unit so we know what's a fetch unit we know the notion of tlb which stored the translations so this is the itlb this is the instruction cache we haven't talked about this uh, in the notion of pre-decode and all we talked about the instruction queue and again we didn't talk about uh, this fancy thing about uh, the intel uh, which, which decodes right uh, this is actually your register remap table. This is your ROV. Uh, this is the reservation station. And these are the different uh, functional units. When we talk about uh, memory, so that there is a buffer uh, similar to load queue, store queue. There is DTLB for data translations for the data cache, L2 TLB, uh, L2 cache, and then, then, then uh, the interface uh, that, that goes forward, right? uh th this is something more from intel uh, i i don't know whether you can see it properly but uh, the, the, the goal is just to see that yeah whatever we are uh, studying through this uh, course they are actually part of the uh, commercial machines similarly few from ibm uh, the terminology may be a bit uh, different uh, com compared to the uh, intel but you will find the similar uh, structure uh, here, right? Uh, there is prefetching, there are caches, uh, there are TLBs, there are load queues, store queues, there are branch predictors, instruction cache, and all sorts of execution units, right? And the typical uh, uh, pipeline stages, okay? Similarly from uh, AMD, um, you will find more or less uh, similar operations, but uh, there, there will be subtle differences. So you can go for uh, this particular link and look at all the micro architectures from uh, various uh, commercial companies. So for example, here I'm talking about Intel, but you can replace Intel with something else and then uh, go for it. So it's called the wiki chip. It will provide you all the details, uh, all the micro architectural details. You can also go for this link and compare different kinds of processors that are available in the market, like a desktop server processor and uh, how, how the parameters are different. Uh, even the cost is different, right? So uh, go, go and uh, look at it. So with that, I will stop. Thank you.